Before we get started here, I first want to send a big shout out to my buddy Raymond at the 5R Show. Dude, this is incredible. Thank you so much. This artwork is awesome. Raymond made this box for me, or made the artwork for the box. I just need to cut it out and uh, uh, print it. I have to print it and cut it out. And I have a uh, professional printer doing that for me. My favorite toy store here in town, which is less than a mile from my house, is Robbie's Hobbies. They are, uh, aside from being a toy store, they're a sign printing business. And uh, so they're going to make this for me and, and uh, put it on a, a piece of uh, cardstock so that I can fold it and make this box. Dude, Raymond, thank you so much. Uh, next week, I'm going to do another video just about this box. Hello, people. So this has been my experiment airplane while manufacturing the, uh, the Cobra Rattler. But I have an idea for this uh, that I think is going to be pretty cool. But I don't have any more engines, so we're going to take this piece of uh, just generic steel and turn it down on the lathe in the shop and try to make ourselves some, um, some engines for this Rattler. However, um, we're not going to fix these wings. So I was using this as an experiment to see how uh, the turning of the wings will work. Oh, it would be like that, um, and I didn't put the cut in the right place, but now I know that. The cut should be beyond the landing gear because when the wing turns, the wing's going to sit, the, the, the wing is going to act as the landing gear for the aircraft. But if you'll notice the angle that these wings are at naturally, uh, th that's nothing like the original toy. The original toy is straight, which is at a really different angle more like this so allowing it to turn at this point would make it look awkward it's got to turn at this point back here and it's not going to sit on its landing gear anymore it's just going to sit on the wing when it's turned so I finally got a camera mount installed from an I-beam in my ceiling. This is a, um, a lamp rod. And I just attached it to a piece of wood directly over my lathe. So now you can see what I'm doing. All right. So this is the, uh, the generic piece of steel we're using. I'm not sure where this came from, but it was just scrap that came from something. It's uh, 312 thousandths of an inch, which is what those engines measured out to. So first, what we're gonna do is face off. It's like looking in a mirror, only not. This, the end of this rod, uh, which will give us a nice flat surface to drill into.
can't get through! Sure we can! All right, there's my battle damaged VTOL. She shot up pretty well. Missing a rear wing. Missing the canopy. The left wing and the luggage compartment cover is missing. Man, I don't know if that craft is salvageable or not. Now that's not the only thing I worked on. And again, I have to apologize to you guys. I apologize I can't show you everything, but I also worked on this one at the same time. I know I told you I was going to experiment by cutting this again, but I just decided to use this. And uh, quite honestly, it was a failure. I wanted to be able to pin this and then make it so that they would move, but um, it just didn't work out well. They sagged. The wings uh, just couldn't hold their their shape and uh, to, to get it to look this way uh, the only thing I could do was to you know fix them all together but it looks pretty good I like it I'm impressed <laughs> I'm impressed with everything I do <laughs> now this engine back here I had to manufacture these two engines are uh, the original uh, casted engines that came with the plane. Uh, this one, however, I had to make all three of these engines because I just didn't have any. Now that's not all. While working on those two, I also made this Joe Confiscated VTOL. I really wanted to keep this classic Zymax Deco with the tiger teeth and uh, the Air Force markings on the rear wing. So what I did is I, I was able to modify this without disturbing uh, the paint job and I, I was really shocked at that. I didn't use a torch on these wings as you can see there. The paint job did take a little bit of uh, damage but I, I put the I stood this up against a uh, space heater and let it get really hot so hot that I couldn't touch the the material so hot I couldn't touch the material but uh, it did manipulate easily with uh, a pair of pliers I just clamped down on the wing here and then pulled on it and uh, was able to keep the shape of the of the of the horizontal wing here, but the vertical wings were able to bend without breaking them. So that worked out pretty well. That's my Joe confiscated VTOL. <laughs> so with this one, I made a mistake drilling the hole. As you can see there, the hole was way, way off. And uh, so to fix that, I just took a really short piece of acrylic and put a half round file mark on it and then super glued it to the body of the airplane, which really doesn't give it the depth that it, it, it looks when you know it's installed properly this one is slightly off as well you can see how it dips a little bit more there than it does there but it looks even so that's really what matters so there's my three VTOLs I worked on this weekend and here's the original one that I started with my VTOL collection. <laughs> Again, thank you, Raymond. I really appreciate your gift. Uh, no one, none of my subscribers, anyway, has ever made anything for me. Uh, thank you, man. That That's incredibly special. 
I don't know how to repay you. It's just the generosity is is overwhelming. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching, people. Make it a great day. Taxi, mister. <laughs>